Welcome to the Passive Solar Greenhouse Design Tool Overview. The following tool has been built to quickly assess the feasibility of passive solar greenhouses within any cold climate regime. The tool allows users to enter in bioregional climate data as well as desired internal design temperatures in order to optimize the greenhouse R value, glazing type, thermal mass, and artificial light. The tool will give users an approximate operational cost of lights and heating appliances per month and year so that they can anticipate ongoing energy expenses. The tool is not meant to provide detailed design information and it is highly recommended that you consult with the appropriate building experts within your bioregion for foundation design, building science, thermal protection, and heating system design. To be notified of the updates and when they're released, go to www.vergepermaculture.ca forward slash GH tool and sign up. If you have any feedback on the tool or suggestions as to items that we could add to make it better, please send them to info at vergepermaculture.ca. In this slide set, I'm going to talk about the computer compatibility of the tool. I'm going to give you a tour of the tool. I'm going to talk about some of the tool's strengths and weaknesses, what you can expect, and where you will need additional data. The Passive Solar Greenhouse Design Tool was built in Microsoft Excel. However, it is built without macros and can be used on any spreadsheet tool, both Mac, PC, or cloud-based. If you have any compatibility issues, please get in touch with us and let us know. As an engineer, when we build models, we know going into it that all models are wrong, but some are useful. This is a famous quote by a statistician named George Box. And I believe that it's very important for you to go into using this tool, understanding this concept, because uh, it is easy to look at a model and take it for uh, complete fact or 100% accuracy. However, this is just a model of a greenhouse and it's only as accurate as the formulas that we have plugged into it. And when you get into thermodynamic formulas and heat transfer formulas, what you realize is that there's a lot of gaps in these formulas. And so one of the ways that we work around these gaps and these inaccuracies uh, is to understand where they're weak. And by understanding where they're weak, then we can anticipate where we're going to have to harden our designs in order to make them stronger. So I wanted to take some time to explain where there are weaknesses within the tool so that you are not blindsided when you go to build uh, this greenhouse and you understand what assumptions you've actually made as a result of using this tool. So the tool is weak in the following areas. The light module that you will see within the tool, which is a calculator that helps you to figure out how much it's going to cost to artificially light your greenhouse should you decide to do this, is based upon average day length. Commercial greenhouses use a far more sophisticated way of designing their light systems using a methodology called PAR, which is photosynthetic active radiation. This was beyond the scope of this course, and so if you intend on designing a large-scale commercial passive solar greenhouse, you're likely going to want to get in touch with a local commercial lighting designer who understands PAR, how it functions, and how PAR will be utilized within your large-scale passive solar greenhouse design. If you're not building a commercial greenhouse, this will give you a good approximation with regards to how much light you're going to have to use, as well as how much that light is going to cost you to operate. The thermal mass calculator is based on rules of thumb for thermal mass. What this means is that we're not actually doing a transient thermodynamic analysis of your particular greenhouse model. What we're doing is taking some simple, simple metrics that you've already entered into the calculator and based on some rules of thumb, based on good passive solar design, have made some assumptions with regards to how much thermal mass is required within the greenhouse in order for it to operate correctly. Again, if you're going to be building a large-scale commercial passive solar greenhouse, you're going to want to do a detailed thermodynamic optimization for the actual greenhouse itself, and part of that optimization is going to include thermal mass optimization. The subterranean heating and cooling system model is based on fan optimization models. So it is important for you to understand that this is not based on a transient thermodynamic model. And so all we're doing within this module within the passive solar greenhouse design tool is optimizing that system based on air exchanges between the subterranean heating and cooling system and the greenhouse to optimize the fan and the ducting. This does not make any promises about how effective this system will be. And if you intend again on building a large scale passive solar greenhouse, or if you require a detailed understanding of how this is going to work from a transient perspective, we will need to use a far more complex tool. If this is something that you need, you can get in touch with me 
at rob at vergepermaculture.ca and I'll be happy to provide you with consulting services in order to do a detailed thermodynamic model on your particular greenhouse. Where the tool is strong. So the tool provides a quick assessment of the following metrics. Number one, the thermodynamic performance of different materials. So one of the challenges when designing passive solar greenhouses is understanding how the material selection and choices that you make are going to impact the overall performance of a building. So this tool will give you a fairly good approximation of how much thermal energy you are going to require based on the type of glazing and R values and building materials that you choose in order to build your greenhouse out of. As a result of the inputs in R value on all of those specific materials, it'll output an approximate fuel requirement based on the selection with regards to how warm you want to keep your greenhouse year round and how cold it gets within your specific bioregion, allowing you to plan for the amount of wood, propane, natural gas, or other fuels that are depicted within the passive solar greenhouse tool. The tool also provides a basket of different types of fuels that you can use to see how you want to heat the greenhouse and how much of each of those fuels is going to be required in order to keep your greenhouse at the specific conditions that you've specified. In addition, the tool will provide you with an approximate power cost to deploy lighting within the greenhouse. So if you choose to use artificial lighting, this tool will give you an idea as to how much that lighting is gonna cost based on the area and lighting technology that you choose. The goal for the tool was to provide enough information to people who are not engineers or thermodynamic experts to make fairly sophisticated design decisions without having to go back to university and learn to become a mechanical engineer. At certain scales of greenhouses, however, when the cost starts to escalate fairly rapidly, it pays to work with a thermodynamic expert to make sure that you're making decisions that are optimized based on the goals that you've stated on the front end. If, however, you're just planning on building a smaller scale, either backyard or urban farming style greenhouse for your particular context, this tool will give you enough confidence in the information and decisions that you've made in order to build your own passive solar greenhouse, either for urban farming or your backyard system. What to expect as a result of using the tool? So as a result of using the tool, you can expect confidence in the R value of your walls and glazing material selection. Making these decisions during the design phase is really important, and this tool makes it easy for the person that doesn't understand what a BTU, kilojoule, or specific heat loss units and what they mean. The tool is gonna to give you a good approximation as to how much fuel you will need to keep the greenhouse warm on an annual basis. It's gonna give you information on how much thermal mass is required within the structure. It's also gonna give you an approximation as to how much your lighting system will cost to operate on an annual basis. And lastly, it'll give you an optimized fan system for your subterranean heating and cooling system. I wanted to give a couple of final notes around subterranean heating and cooling systems. Subterranean heating and cooling systems are pretty unique devices which allow you to store thermal energy from your greenhouse underground when you have a surplus of energy during the day. This heat is stored during the day so that it can be released at night. And there's a lot of empirical evidence out there that these systems actually do function. To my knowledge, there has never been any thermodynamic modeling done on these systems, and therefore it is difficult for me to make recommendations or promises about how well these systems will function in a real life scenario. This is part of our ongoing research and as we develop heuristics and rules of thumb for these systems, we will be providing them to our Passive Solar Greenhouse grads as well as future students. Because every greenhouse course that I have taught, students have asked me how to design these systems, I wanted to create a simple tool that would allow you with confidence to specify a fan and specific duct sizes so that it would get you within range. Within this tool, I've provided some factors of safety to make sure that it stacks the chances of success for the subterranean heating and cooling system in your favor. We'll go through that in more detail when we get to the actual design page itself. If you would like to see more on these subterranean heating and cooling systems, I advise you check out the case studies provided within the course, as there are several greenhouses that use these systems successfully and have fairly interesting empirical results. If you have any questions about subterranean heating and cooling systems, please get in touch and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Where you will need to get additional data. After you've completed the passive solar greenhouse design tool, you are still going to need to get additional information and guidance on the structure of your building. And this is gonna come either from a civil engineer or a local builder that knows and understands your local building code. Large structures should have a detailed thermodynamic optimization performed on them to make sure that you are building a structure that is gonna perform exactly how you expect it. 
This requires sophisticated software and a detailed understanding of how heat moves through a building and is beyond the scope of this course. Commercial greenhouses should engage a lighting professional to help specify lighting systems if required. So if you intend on having a large scale lighting system for your greenhouse, you're going to want to get in touch with your local greenhouse lighting expert so that they can help you with your design. Large scale subterranean heating and cooling systems should also be thermodynamically optimized. If you intend on putting in a large system that is going to store heat either seasonally or daily, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you check it against a sophisticated thermodynamic model. When these systems get large, they can cost a lot of money very, very quickly, both in capital and operational costs, and you'll want to make sure that you get them optimized to ensure that they're going to perform in the way that you expect them to. Let's now go and have a tour of the tool. Right now, we're just gonna go through a quick tour of the Passive Solar Greenhouse Design Tool. You'll notice that you can navigate through all of the tabs on the bottom here. So main menu, climate, energy, heat loss, thermal mass, light design, subterranean heating and cooling system, and the final report. The climate data is where we enter the USDA zone that we choose to mimic, which gives us an indoor air temperature that we wanna maintain above. It gives us a place to put in our heating degree days, our extreme minimum temperature, and our average sun hours. The energy consumption sheet allows us to enter all of the information regarding the building that we choose to design. And the main goal for this sheet is to give us an output of the amount of energy that the building is gonna consume in a peak scenario. It also has a really unique data visualization tool that gives you information with regards to where all the energy is going so that you can put your effort into the places that have the lowest lying fruit. In this case, glazing and infiltration losses. The heat loss and cost is a tool that allows us to determine how much it's gonna to cost to heat our greenhouse. And we have the ability to choose multiple fuels as well as a primary and secondary heating system which can operate on different fuels at different costs. The result of this sheet is going to give us information on how much it's going to cost to keep our greenhouse warm on a monthly and annual basis. The thermal mass calculator allows us to get a baseline number with regards to how much additional thermal mass we should be putting into the building in order to maintain a steady internal temperature both in the summer and in the wintertime. The light design sheet gives us the ability to determine how much it's going to cost to artificially light our greenhouse should we choose to do so. It allows us to choose from five different light technologies, as well as determine how many hours a day our greenhouse is going to have artificial light, as well as which months we choose to have the light on and off. The goal for this sheet is to determine approximately how much it's gonna cost per month and on an annual basis to keep our greenhouse lit. The subterranean heating and cooling system sheet allows us to design a fan system as well as a series of ducts that sit underneath our greenhouse to store thermal energy through the day. The goal for this system is to make sure that we have the right number of ducts, the right diameter of duct, and the right size fan to make sure that the system is gonna operate within an optimal range. The last sheet is a report sheet, and it'll give you a summary of all of the information that you've put in, as well as the outputs for that particular greenhouse that you're designing. If you require any help, there are help menus that you can go and look at the back end of the sheet. If you have any questions about the tool, or if there are any components within the tool that is not completely clear, please get in touch with us and we will add additional videos to ensure that you understand exactly how this tool functions so that you can get on and design and then build your passive solar greenhouse. If you're looking to design your own passive solar greenhouse and want help in choosing R value for your walls, a glazing material, the amount of heat or size of heater required to heat the greenhouse, your lighting system, thermal mass calculation, as well as designing a subterranean heating and cooling system, you will find that this tool makes passive solar greenhouse design infinitely easier. These videos will show you how to use the tool. And if you're interested in purchasing the tool for your own passive solar greenhouse design, you can find information on how to purchase the tool at Small Farm Academy in the link below. Thank you.